Oh, please, all of you. Okay, so I continue. Uh, I, I split my screen. So, uh, uh, so the uh, uh, just just a few words. What I uh, first of all, uh, well, maybe maybe uh, I can answer the question from the last time. Some somebody has questions. Maybe good time to ask them. Uh, well, uh, if not, I'll I'll just uh, continue what what I did last time and just uh, with brief recall that I uh, my last claim was the following. So you have well, this Pantelet system, but uh, it can be generalized and the generalization looks as follows. So you have a, a curve. So you have a delta is a, uh, uh, so the delta is a Newton polygon, any Newton polygon. Polygon, uh, P is a poly corresponding polynomial. C is a curve, corresponding curve. And uh, we have a uh, dynamical system, uh, which is the following. So it's actually not the dynamical system because there are different, uh, well, many flows, but what I want to say, I have some phase space, which is, uh, uh, is the following. So we have a, a pair which consists of curves and G tuples of points, so div divisors, divisor, or, or well, I can say G tuples of points, G tuple of points. On G or on C, and we have a, a, a some bigger transformation of the space. And the transformation of the space is, is, is some group G which acts on the space. And this group G is generated by uh, the following procedure. So by, by the group is generated by evolution. So G group generated by G generated by, by evolutions. And the evolutions are enumerated by, in, uh, in a sense, by uh, the ways how we cut uh, our uh, polygon in two. So all possible ways to cut in two gives us a way to construct out of G points, construct other G points by tracing a curve which connects the two. So uh, just one remark, which I maybe I give the answer and the, uh, the I will uh, give arguments uh, to this answer a little bit later. But uh, some remark, which is uh, quite important, and I'm speaking about curve, but actually uh, we, I have not just, just a curve, but it's planar curve, so curve in the plane. So from the point of view of algebraic geometry is some other data. So planar curve is, well, very trivial remark, planar curve uh, is the same thing as, uh, well, I'm, then I'm speaking, uh, saying planar means, curve in C star squared. I just prefer, uh, for me, plane is just C star squared, not C squared, that's the well, doesn't matter. Uh, planar curve is uh, actually a curve plus uh, two functions on it. Two meromorphic functions. Functions. And also a very uh, elementary uh, fact that uh, given a planar curve, so you can construct a, uh, a Newton polygon. So what is a Newton polygon if you have just curve and two meromorphic functions? So this is a, a let's, uh, uh, so construct, how to construct a polygon. We can construct a polygon, a convex polygon, Namely, uh, we let's take uh, well for any point. Uh, well, let's take the space of pairs. Uh, uh, order in the point x the curve of one function. Well, I'll denote it by lambda and u. These two functions just in order to have the same 
functions as before. So order of x of lambda and order of x of mu. Of course, these vectors, uh, well, and I take over uh, union over all x uh, such that, uh, uh, so showing you know, collection of, of, of that, such that uh, this thing is, I just take all the points where it's not zero. So if lambda and mu have either zero and, and, or a pole. So this, well, this set will be I will, will denoted by a1, et cetera, uh, a, b1, a, n, b, n, b, I, a, s, b, s. S is just a number of poles where at least one function has a, a singularity. And I claim that, uh, it's obvious claim that the sum of AIs is equal to sum of BIs is equal to, to zero, just because the sum of orders of any function vanishes. So therefore, uh, if we draw on the plane, uh, uh, all these vectors, AI, BI, it, it gives us a collection of vectors just a hedgehog and collection of vectors sum zero. And if you have a collection of vectors sum zero, you can construct out of it a polygon because you take just one vector and then take it. you add the next, which is to the left of it, add the next, which is to the left of it, etc. So you you take the, it's obviously something convex and you come back, this condition implies that you come back to the origin. So it's the sides of, uh, size of a complex particle, of a complex, convex polygon. So the space which I, we're speaking about is just a, a curve with some functions on it. It's, it's the first remark. And uh, the second remark now is that uh, we are going to, well, the-, the uh, ex Excuse me. But yes. you have yeah, you have to have a cyclic order. Yes, uh, but it's certainly, but it's given just by the cyclic order on the plane. You draw you draw these lines. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And the cyclic order is given by the condition that the polygon is convex. So it's ah, yeah, right. yes, yes, right. Yes. Thank you, thank you. you. Thank you for the question. It's just uh, uh, well trivial, but uh, not well hard observation which took me sometimes to to realize so you uh, 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 you uh, uh, have this, this collection of, of factors and uh, well the claim is the following so the claim which I don't uh, 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 prove right away so you take the uh, let's take the space c to the n minus one uh, which is uh, just the space of n one etc n uh, f such that the sum of n1 plus, plus n s equals zero. And you quotient it by the uh, vectors a1, the subgroup generated by a1 as and b1 bs. And if you quotient, you get the group. And the rank of this group, of course, is, uh, is n minus three because you quotient by something with two generators, but uh, you may have a Distortion at it, and the the group generated, uh, which which well, the group which acts on on this space is just just this group. So this is for a moment, it's just a claim. So for for any polygon uh, polygon, you associate a, an abelian group, which is uh, it's just well. Once again, we'll, you will see that it's the case uh, very uh, very easily. Maybe maybe I should also uh, remark why it is uh, well. Also, it's not a proof, but I'll do the argument why it's the case. So, uh, the uh, how to to uh, map? So, I constructed, I made this construction. It's, so, I traced a, a curve, and I took g points here, and I produced the other uh, g tuples of points. Uh, I took g tuples of points on the curve, produced another one by intersecting it with the some auxiliary curve. So I claim that uh, the uh, this involution is actually uh, uh, well something has something to do with this group. 
And the claim is the following. So uh, let's take the, this uh, map. So I take two of points, for example, A1, et cetera. So let's denote these points by A1, et cetera, AS. AS, and I produce out of them the, 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 uh, the uh, points B1, et cetera, PS. So there is a map, some involution sigma, which takes AS to B1, et cetera, PS. And I claim that uh, the following, that if I take the, the, the uh, sum of the two, as a divisor, so A1, et cetera, AS, plus, plus, and just consider it as a, as a divisor, plus B1 claim, BS, uh, it is uh, a divisor, which is it's equivalent to a divisor, supported at infinity uh, uh, at uh, C minus C bar minus C. So uh, the support of this divisor is uh, to infinity. Indeed, uh, uh, be why? Because let's consider, well, this, this uh, uh, divisor, so this divisor, since it's a divisor, well, the, I, I took this polynomial P prime, and which defined my curve. So P prime is a function restricted to C is a function. So P prime is, I recall that the, the, the P prime is just, well, this is C, this is C prime. The second curve, I intersect, I take the first curve and intersect to the second. And the second is also de uh, defined by polynomial. So it's, since it's defined by a polynomial, so therefore P prime restricted to C cannot have poles, only zeros. And the only uh, pose which it can have is pose at infin infinity. So has no, uh, the divisor of this function, so the, the divisor as well, the standard notation for the divisor just in brackets, the divisor of the function is exactly equal to uh, a1 plus etc. cetera, uh, a1 plus etc. cetera plus bs, bs plus something at infinity. At infinity. And therefore, well, this uh, automatically shows that uh, it's something is infinity. And this group. So, uh, excuse me, P, P prime restricted to C bar, right? Uh, restricted to, yeah, well, it's not defined over, uh, over C. So, P prime, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, of course, of course. Uh -huh. Of course. Uh, may, thank you. Of course, C bar. Otherwise, it's not, uh, yeah, otherwise, it's not something is infinity. So this is kind of trivial statement, and uh, just the G uh, is uh, another formulation. G is uh, nothing but uh, the uh, group of divisors supported in infinity. Divisors supported at infinity. So at uh, well, infinity means uh, at c bar minus c and at C bar minus C, uh, modulo, of course, linear equivalence. This is also obvious because uh, the, you, we have exactly S points at infinity. So therefore, is that to the power, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I should write here S, of course. Uh, uh, you have S points at infinity, but uh, so divisors, uh, sorry, of degree zero. Support it as infinity. Uh, and uh, uh, divisor so, uh, 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 support it as infinity. So there are z to the power s minus one of them uh, because the degree implies that the degree of the sum is zero. And uh, uh, the a's and b's are just, uh, well, a's and b's are uh, zeros, uh, well, of. Uh, of the function lambda and mu. Lambda and mu to give some distinguished divisor, which is linear equivalent uh, to, to, to zero by, by definition. Uh, so the, therefore, uh, the, uh, uh, this, this group is not nothing but uh, 
of the well this question okay so this is just uh, just a remark now i want to say that our uh, well i come back to to uh, to the, my, my goal for today Na namely i want to do the following so i want to take the phase space which is uh, phase space uh, and i discuss that the curve c uh, curve with two functions curve uh, with two functions Two functions and a, a collection of points uh, uh, of G points and uh, G, G tuple of points and I want to introduce coordinates on this space so just parameterize this the whole space well in one particular uh, case where uh, we had, uh, well, there are plenty of, of coordinates, but one, there's one distinguished uh, coordinate set, which I will, I will discuss uh, now, uh, introduce now. But before that, uh, uh, well, I, there will be also some custom structure on this space and on plenty of other structures. And uh, this coordinate charts will allow to work with the space uh, better than just uh, case by case. So, uh, uh, I, I change a little bit. So G tuple functions is more or less the same thing. It's just rational equivalent with the uh, Abel theorem. That is the same thing as uh, the uh, well, the, the big uh, G of, of, of sigma, which is uh, the uh, space of line bundles of degree G. Uh, and this is also uh, more uh, not well, not canonically, almost not. Canonically equivalent to uh, the Jacobian of curve, which is the uh, the uh, well, maybe I should even write better. Well, I would write down that this no canonical is amorphic to p bar of g minus one of sigma. Of course, this is amorphism is not canonical, but well, we have plenty of distinguished points on the our curve, uh, namely points at infinity. So, uh, sorry, I wrote right sigma instead of c bar. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just uh, our aim uh, is uh, to parameterize uh, this fight the phase space by uh, just to start to to certain power. Uh, and for that, I want to reformulate. Well, out of that, I'll reformulate. Uh, uh, namely, I uh, will uh, intermediate aim is uh, just uh, interpret uh, the phase space. as a uh, space of configuration of flats, of configuration of flats. Uh, namely, uh, well, be why? Because, uh, well, just with my favorite object in mathematics, uh, configuration of flats, I can do plenty of things, introduce coordinates and on brackets, quantize, etc. So I want really to do everything uh, to do interpret in this way. So I, I will do that. So suppose we have a curve C, and I want to construct flags out of that. So first of all, so the construction uh, we will construct uh, uh, S flags. So we'll construct S flags. Uh, in into dimensional space and the construction is the following. So let's take let H be just the space of all functions. So holomorphic functions, holomorphic. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So let's. Yes. Uh, I want to, to say so. Well, I want to say that we have for C and L the pair of the phase space, phase space, space. 
is pair C of L. L is a line bundle of degree G minus one. Uh, so L line bundle of degree G minus one. Uh, it's not really very important that this G minus one, it's just more convenient for some purpose. Uh, on, on C bar, and out of that, I consider flag. So flags. Uh, so what, what I do, so first of all, construct the space where all these flags lie. So H is the space of homomorphic sections. So homomorphic sections. of L restricted to, to C. And therefore, so they are of course meromorphic on C bar. So I allow pose, but only uh, at, at infinity. And now I can define F alpha I uh, to be the space of uh, all uh, psi in H. such that the order at the point alpha, and alpha is uh, 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 one of the points of the gene. So alpha is in uh, C bar minus C. So order at alpha of psi is greater or equal than R. So it means that if I have positive, it means we have zeros, uh, zero of order I, is, and alpha is negative, we have pole of R. So this is a space and, uh, well, this is a collection of, well, this gives a filtration with order of poles, so this gives a flag. And they, so there are obvious properties, uh, namely that if you have F alpha uh, I, and you, for example, you take the, the uh, properties of these flags, that the union uh, of all the facts is equal to, uh, uh, to, to zero because you take just the homomorphic functions which vanishes with any order is zero. Um, sorry, uh, other way out, intersection. The union of F alpha for, for given alpha, for any given alpha of I is the whole space H. Uh, uh, the third, uh, third um, uh, property that uh, you have uh, uh, the this uh, the dimension. If you take the intersection of over alpha of f alpha uh, i alpha, so if you for, for for every every point now, well, so far these are just flags. Uh, independent flags of, of in every point, but now I, there are some properties which uh, tell how they intersect, uh, how they interact between different points. So you, if you take intersection, we take one subspace in every every point and intersect them, then it gives you something kind of dimensional. So the dimension of the space is either uh, the sum of i alpha. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I should should do minus sum by alpha or zero. Uh, so if you have a section of uh, the line bundle with the given order of, uh, uh, of poles, then you can in every every point where it has right to have poles, so you can obviously compute the, the dimension. So it's zero, of course, if this expression is, uh, is uh, negative, uh, then it's zero. Otherwise, it's, uh, of course, in, uh, this Excuse is me, uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't really understand what uh, the symbol I alpha means. I I sub I, alpha. So ah uh, uh, well, I means the order of the pole. Yes, this I understand. And alpha is a point. Yeah, but I sub alpha. What, what ah, I sub alpha. Sorry, it means that we choose actually for any well. Let's choose choose for any choice. Any choice ah. of maybe maybe it's a very good question because of uh, actually uh, of uh, i alpha for any alpha 
integer point, integer number for any for any alpha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, we'll even uh, use the the notation. Uh, so notation. So uh, uh, cho choosing choosing uh, i alpha for any alpha. This is equivalent to choice choice of a divisor. So uh, on on the finally the many are non zero, right? Uh, finitely many, but yes, but these points are the points in uh, C, it's just alpha in, uh, perhaps I should, alpha in C bar ah, minus ah, C. Ah, okay. And this is just finitely many. There are finitely many of alphas. There are finitely many alphas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there are just alpha, one can say that that, or you, you can say that alpha is just from one to L. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh, thank you. Uh, for you know, so choice of uh, a divisor supported at infinity at uh, at uh, uh, c bar minus c, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I will just divide by the divisor by the letter d, and there will be notation that the intersection. Sorry, right, uh, sorry, forgot. Right, the intersection. So I'll I'll denote just by F D uh, the this uh, well the inter this intersection the intersection of F alpha I I alpha I alpha where D is just the, the I one the driest. So this is like well, this is uh, this statement is just the uh, uh, the the consequence of the Riemann Roch theorem. It's direct direct uh, computation, uh, and uh, that's the reason why I prefer to deal with uh, line bundles with degree uh, g minus one because you don't need to add something on the right hand side. Otherwise, it's just everything is shifted. It's, it's nothing nothing special about. Uh, that is g minus one. So you, you have this property, and finally, so the first property, the second property, the third property, and the fourth property is also obvious that if you take, uh, 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 you have a map, uh, you have two maps, lambda uh, and mu, lambda sends h to h, and the same thing, mu is also sends h to h. Uh, and the group is generated by them, uh, so the the just the squares which have some of the space. But these two maps have the following property: that if you act, uh, so this map is defined by lambda psi, lambda psi equals small lambda psi, and the same thing mu psi is small mu psi. So you can take the section and multiply by either by lambda by or by mu, and you still get the section, but with another bundle. So uh, uh, then the property is that lambda uh, times f alpha i is equal to lambda f alpha i plus a i. And the same thing about mu, mu f alpha i is equal to m f alpha i plus uh, b i. So this is uh, there is a kind of symmetry of this collection of flags. It's nothing not, never happens in finite dimension. So uh, they, it's, uh, it does preserve any subspace, but uh, it preserves uh, a, a collection, well, a set of subspaces. So it shifts so somehow the dimension of every subspace. Dimensions are infinite, so it shifts the dimension by some constant point. It's like like a hotel with a countable number of rooms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every or every uh, or a hats which well gets which takes hats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. So this is a, a selection of facts, and uh, the claim is that uh, in fact the, that that uh, other way around. So given a collection of facts. Uh, uh, with this, with these four properties, you can construct uh, uniquely uh, the curve and 
uh, curve to, to function as one bundle, which gives this uh, this set. So my aim now is that instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, characterizing the um, the uh, curve and line bundle, I'm trying the, the, the flat. And once again, maybe I sh should uh, repeat why I need to pass some, some kind of more complicated construction, some infinite dimensional construction to describe something finite dimensional. The, the main idea is that, well, the, if you have a space of curves, of course, it's something easy, characterizable, just presided by coefficients of the polynomial. But uh, the white bundles are the given curve, so it's not rational manifold, it's just some forest. So, uh, so abelian variety, which is not, not uh, rational and we cannot parameterize it globally. So, uh, separately, uh, curve is a parameterized, but uh, the space of white bundles is not possible. But however, the pairs of C of L turns out to be a rational, rational variety. Uh, and uh, this, that's all what, what I want to. To do in order to work with that, I want to, to uh, pass through some construction which is uh, which shows that it's really rare. So now I pass to the well, essentially to control construction, so GK construction, which is uh, slightly reformulated from what is written at construction. And uh, so uh, uh, I want to parameterize. So once again, the the uh, ah uh, yes, uh, I want to say that uh, the uh, the polygon uh, Newton polygon is somehow uh, well in these properties. The Newton polygon is hidden in this A and B. So this symmetry group actually knows what is the Newton polygon on top of, of this picture. So GK construction is the following. So in order to parameterize, uh, make we construct the parameterization. We construct first. Uh, uh, something which is can be done explicitly, but I don't want to do uh, too many uh, uh, to spend too much time uh, doing that. But what I maybe maybe I will do, but but uh, next time which I will speak about different groups. So uh, we want to construct uh, uh, construct a, uh, a graph first at, at, uh, at uh, stage. Construct a graph, a bipartite graph. Uh, on a torus which is of course equivalent that doubly periodic periodic graph on the plane on the plane Uh, such that uh, it's zigzags reproduce represent homology classes. Uh, AI and BI, which is of course in this squared, which is equal to H1 of the, the torus. Uh, so uh, uh, just just the uh, example, which may be uh, better than definition. So you, we, my favorite, of course, the, you have a torus, which is just a, a square with sides uh, glued to each other. And uh, we have uh, two uh, you have a bipartite graph on it. And uh, for example, this part of the part graph, and what are the exact, the exact paths which go, uh, which go, um, 
So on this graph, I, I want to say that on this graph, we have two black vertices and two white vertices. And uh, this exact the path which turn uh, right uh, at every white vertex and left on every black. So uh, it will be something like that. And uh, well, there is another zigzag which is uh, which goes like that. And the third. And there is a, the fourth, which is. It's an example, and uh, all these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, zigzags is, uh, actually represent well. They they uh, represent four classes in H one, uh, and one class is uh, so. They this one is oh this one. This one. Then the red is this one. The, uh, the gray is uh, this one. And finally, uh, uh, the, the green is this one. So you have this the zigzags, and they. Of course, they correspond to the to to uh, a polygon, which is uh, the, the square, and actually this is the same polygon as uh, we started with this pain levy because uh, uh, because uh, the well the pain levy polygon was uh, a little bit. Uh, shifted by well, I recall the polygon which is correspond to but uh, not in the way. Uh, sorry, Ponsele. Uh, Ponsele polygon was uh, this one. Uh, but uh, if you well, it's uh, by the action of SO two you can transform it to the, the this square. So it's actually the same. So uh, you. Well, you have a, a, a the, the claim which I don't prove, but I will do maybe a little bit later. But also the claim that for any uh, any polygon for any claim, for any uh, polygon delta, such graph can be constructed. And then uh, how we can, uh, now we want to uh, out of that, uh, so the coordinates are also our aim, now coordinates will be associated to the faces of this polygon. Well, there are two, actually two ways to construct the, the coordinates and I will do, try to do both. Uh, one is because it's uh, more universal and well, it gives some, Coordinates which are good for, for, for quantization for Poisson structure, and another one is actually uh, a causal related tau function. It's just well, particular cases of tau function. I want to to make something which is parallel to to what uh, what is done by by G. So that's uh, that's the, the tau function appear in the pictures as well. But I will first start with uh, with the one which is kind of Poisson coordinates, which are called coordinates of type X. So the idea is the following, that uh, we have uh, all this picture. Now we, uh, 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 we can associate, so associate dividers of degree, uh, well, supported, supported at C, minus C bar 
always both uh, for every uh, of degree degree zero to every face. of degree one to every uh, uh, white vertex uh, of degree minus one. Well, we'll check if it's always a problem of sign, which uh, I forget to do. But, uh, and uh, of degree uh, one to every black vertex. Well, how, how one can do that uh, the, with the following rule. So uh, uh, you, uh, with the property every time, with the property, that every time we cross the zigzag, We add or subtract the corresponding point of C minus C bar, C bar minus C. Uh, in fact, so we have the the these curves by definition we construct in such a way we have these zigzags correspond to homology classes and these homology classes are just sides of the the polygon and sides polygon are just points of infinity so uh, so we, therefore every time we we just walk around around the torus and every time we cross the uh, the the corresponding zigzag we add or subtract the point in infinity and the other subtract depends on whether we, we cross uh, it from uh, well uh, from left to right or right to left because all things are oriented the the oriented for example well, from white to, to to black and every, every time uh, well and also well we are speaking in terms right left of course means that every every thing that is actually oriented curve so we know how to to to, to go around and well, this is really very important correspondence. So uh, if you have such a graph, then you, you have all these data. And out of this data, you can construct coordinates into two different ways, which I'll, I'll uh, explain in a moment. So first way is, a, is the following. So therefore, uh, so therefore we have a, uh, uh, we can associate Uh, one dimensional subspace which is just f d uh, remember the definition f d is just intersection of my f's uh, here's f d is just intersection of, uh, of for d and d is the divisor associated to, to something so for every every vertex uh, we associate, ah, maybe maybe I should uh, should uh, mention why I can do that. So what I do, I take any face of my graph and I, I associate, for example, for this face, I associate it, uh, well, I, so I fix one face and associate zero as a divisor to this face. Then I walk around around my picture. So every time I cross the edge, I cross exactly two uh, two edges, one uh, of uh, one uh, from left to right and one to, from right to left. So for example, if I cross this edge, I subtract the blue and I add, add gray. Uh, here I subtract, uh, uh, add uh, blue and subtract red, etc. So then I walk around, I add and subtract. Uh, and well, if I go from face to, to face, I add one and subtract one. So 
I draw really my zigzags in such a way that they a little bit avoid these vertices. So it's clear from this picture that I go from to the white vertex. I just uh, uh, I just uh, subtract something, and I go to a black vertex. I add something. So uh, in black vertices, I get something uh, of uh, of um, uh, degree one, and on white vertices I get something degree minus one, and on, on faces I get something degree zero. So this is a really correspondence which you you well of course it defines uh, what which divisor you put here, but uh, uh, and well and also a uh, sm small remark that if you go around, you go from here to here, then go back, then of course the uh, you get the divisor which is uh, not uh, not zero. But this divisor is equivalent to uh, is equivalent to to zero because it's divisor of the function uh, function lambda, and then you go this way, the divisor is equivalent to function mu. So this is really very well defined way to associate divisors to to faces. So we can associate one dimensional subspace uh, uh, to every uh, uh, to every black vertex to every white vertex white. And uh, well, so therefore you have a con con and for, for every black vertex. So and uh, for now for every black vertex, Uh, which is well, I'll I'll do uh, is is an example. Well, maybe uh, the uh, white. Well, if you have the, the, maybe I should should say the following. It's much easier. I, so if you have a black vertex, then you have this, and you have some neighbors which are white. And you have uh, here well, some neighbors. This is one dimensional subspaces, V1, V2, V3, V4. The VI is just one dimensional subspaces of uh, V of H. And I claim that uh, that the sum dimension of the sum of the i over the neighbors is uh, strictly smaller. Well, it's actually the valency of the of the black vertex. Vertex minus one. Maybe I I draw the following. So let's take say the following. That this is uh, if you have v one etc. v two v three or v k. So we have k one dimensional subspaces, which is just f f d's. Uh, k dimensional subspaces and then the sum of this uh, the sum it's v i is equal to uh, k minus one. So I claim that this all these uh, one dimensional subspaces actually not a general position. So and they are in uh, well yeah and actually this this uh, sum of v i is uh, uh, nothing but f uh, d prime. Uh, well, d prime for for some some divisor which you can explicitly construct. Uh, maybe maybe I shouldn't shouldn't uh, which can be constructed out of the divisor which is it's here. I don't want to to speak more about that, but uh, want to say that you have uh, well the idea of this construction is the following. So you have for for every white white uh, vertex you associate a one dimensional subspace in the in the vector space and for every uh, black vertex you construct some relation between these two subspaces so it means that they are 
belong to a plane which is um, well in the four dimensional for, for in this example you have just the three dimensional space where all of them belong to if you have three valence artifacts it's just that the two dimensional space etc so we have a configuration of flats and uh, there is a standard cluster construction that uh, given a such a configuration you can associate a flat connection well graph connection on so out of that you construct graph connection drop connection on the this on the beaver side graph and the idea is that uh, you have for every white vertex you have associated one dimensional vector space for every black vertex you associate a, a kernel of the sum direct sum of the eyes to the sum of the eyes it's one dimensional space and this kernel it's black vertex Uh, uh, it's one dimensional space, and uh, therefore you have one dimensional space associated with white vertex, one dimensional space associated with black one. And uh, of course, if you have the sum and you have a map from, from one dimensional space corresponding to the black vertices to white vertices, and you have a connection of the graph and the coordinates, coordinates are uh, uh, monodromies. of the flag of this graph connection. Well, here is just the way how to construct uh, coordinates on, on uh, well, one type of coordinates. Now I'll, I have no so much time, so I'll try to, uh, yes. I'm sorry. You you speak of coordinates on 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 where? On the space of pairs. Okay, but uh, of uh, in, uh, comparing uh, to, to to connections, is it space of connections or moduli of connections? Uh, well, space of moduli of connections, but uh, so it's not yeah. monodromies, but classes of monodromies. Uh, ah, uh, you have an abelian connection. Sorry. Abelian connection. Ah, okay, connection. Good, yeah. good. One dimensional connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, in a sense, well, it's just monodromy. So, it means that it will be C star to the power, uh, uh, C star to the power at number of faces, faces minus one. So, my, my space C, the space of curve and L is isomorphic canonically. To the space of C star to the power a number of faces minus one actually because the product of all monodromies is equal to one. So this is a uh, this is such an isomorphism which is uh, which is constructed in this way. So uh, well maybe it's not very yeah. So this is one class of coordinates and what's nice about these coordinates that they are. So the claim that they, there are there are book coordinates. Here are there book coordinates. Uh, in the sense that uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, coordinates corresponding to uh, to to uh, faces, it's black white, uh, and if you have coordinates say here x and here coordinates say y, so the what's on bracket between x and y is equal to x, y. So otherwise the coordinate, the what's on bracket between log of x and log of y is equal to one. And this is, uh, this is uh, well, and this, they have no common edges and the, the what's on bracket is zero. So this is really good, uh, behaves well with respect to four. So, uh, well, now some remark about another uh, type of coordinates and maybe I'll, I'll continue next time, but I'll just say some kind of announce what is going on. So we have the same thing. We have flags, uh, we have collection of flags. So uh, 
fi uh, fi alpha uh, this is a flag and uh, uh, let's consider a collection of frame flags So the same thing that fi alpha well uh, f tilde and for f tilde which I'll write down a little bit as we're on so I put alpha index of the point uh, upper index and here it's uh, the lower uh, point ah, uh, yes uh, that uh, actually, the FEI alpha frame flag, this means that uh, it's a subspace. Uh, it's a subspace in H. Uh, uh, maybe I should, um, uh, well, H prime, which is not necessarily the same space, but nevertheless, it's, it's uh, H prime and such that. Uh, uh, and plus, so the sub, if I, is subspace plus an element of F I alpha alpha I uh, quotient by F alpha I minus one alpha uh, I minus one. So uh, we we have not only flags, but we have a vector in every quotient. It's kind of uh, well, it's not as it's equivalent in finite dimensional uh, situation. It's just equivalent to giving a poly a poly vector is every every subspace. This is. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Sorry again, but your filtration was. Yeah, yeah. Here, it, it was decreasing, not increasing. Uh, now it's increasing. Yeah, it's f. Yeah, f yeah, but. There's, Ah, it's the new one. Okay, okay. It's I'm I minus one. Yeah, I minus one belongs to mm -hmm. before it was other way around. Yeah. Um, okay. I minus one belongs to F alpha. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why you, that is why that, you change the change you change the position of indices. Of indices, exactly, exactly. This uh -huh. is the reason why it's actually well. Uh, it's natural to consider the spaces will be due to the original space. So this is the. But uh, nevertheless, we we want to construct. Uh, uh, suppose we have a a um, uh, collection of this frame flags, uh, which tilde means a couple subspace plus a vector, uh, and uh, well, the vectors that for different subspaces are unrelated. So we have su such things, and uh, for for this case, and with additional properties, with the property. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, do you mean that this element is non-vanishing, non-zero, or non-vanishing? Yeah, say? yeah, yeah. Of n, non, it, n, n non -vanishing. It's almost the same as uh, saying that um, uh, you have direct sum. You have direct sum of each star is split into as a direct sum or direct product. Maybe <laughs> I cannot judge. Uh, of one dimensional subspaces uh, supplied with with a uh, non vanishing element in each. No, no, it's it's just just well, it's uh, well for for finite dimensional case, uh, for finite dimensional case, uh, finite dimensional case, uh, uh, the space of all flags f alpha, uh, well, the space of such flat is just the SLN quotiented by the unipotent for the subgroup. Uh -huh. And the F alpha uh, is just F alpha well. And F alpha alpha dot is SLN quotiented by uh, the, um, the Borel subgroup. So here you quotient by 
by constant of algebra and here you do not so well it's, it's it doesn't give you a splitting because you choose a vector but yeah, that but, vector but... is it's defined up to up to add, adding uh, up to uh, the flag of smaller dimension oh yeah 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 i i, I was wrong i was wrong sorry mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. this is a little bit different uh, story. And then, uh, well, uh, also, the, I want to, to uh, well, I just, just a few words. So I want to say that uh, we want to define some object. So you, instead of taking the, uh, instead of taking the, um, some monodromy, etc., we can proceed in much simpler way in the spirit of of Dima, and that is uh, to, to do the polling. So for every day, so for every day, uh, every day, uh, such that degree of D, degree of D equals to zero, we can associate uh, the wedge product of F alpha, uh, F of F1 alpha one, of T1, Uh, other way around, one d one f till the f d s. So in a sense, uh, well, I, we want that uh, if well, of course it's we want that this is non-zero. So we want to. So we also impose the condition that if you have well before we had this condition. That uh, the uh, the intersection of my flags be something finite dimensional. Now we want this condition reversed, so everything will be dual. So I want that the intersection of uh, the the union, the direct sum, the sum of f alpha i alpha, uh, the dimension of that. Be equal to the sum of alpha or zero uh, co dimension or zero, uh, depending on if it's positive or negative, or maybe. And in this case, if the uh, degree of the divisor is zero, then you can take the wedge product of corresponding corresponding forms. So, uh, so it's kind of analog of uh, what what uh, well this this quantity is. Well, I, I stop here, but I want to say that uh, what what uh, that uh, somehow uh, what what Dima did is she, she presented this cell function as the wedge product of something. Uh, uh, well, some infinite uh, infinite product, which is uh, well, of two elements of lambda equals to well, with, uh, a wedge b, where a and b are were in lambda infinity over two uh, of some some space, some infinite dimensional space. What we are going to to do here, we do the same thing with the only one the difference will be a one etc. A s, uh, which every a i uh, belongs to lambda of infinity divided by s uh, of h yeah you can also well parameterize the flags of, uh, of this type so uh, the these uh, this is different types of flags and they parameterize a little bit different situation so you have curves with uh, some additional condition of the polynomial and uh, the uh, the additional condition on um, uh, some additional data is every point at infinity, but uh, you can construct functions which are actually the cell functions in the sense of, of Dima. And uh, well, we'll try. To, I will try to explain the bridge between the two next time. Okay, sorry, uh, well, I stopped here. Well, I. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Valodia. So, questions?
Okay, so if, uh, if, uh, if nobody asks questions, I was yeah. just uh, embarrassed to ask more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, yesterday, Sasha Gonchirov told us uh, a similar construction bipartite graph on the surface, um, um, a billion connection on the graph. But from that thing, he constructed a flat bundle of higher rank on the surface. Right. Can you comment? Uh, so. Right, of course. <laughs> Uh, so uh, what what surface construction was the following? Uh, so he had some some surface, and uh, the if you are if you are drawing, we don't see. Ah, sorry, sorry okay. <laughs> I do. I will do the. Uh, so. Uh, one moment. I will try to to uh, to formulate it in the simplest possible way. Uh, yeah, uh, the the idea, uh, the difference is the following. So uh, the, these two construction are uh, well, some have some common common points. So uh, in such a construction, he had a surface which is maybe triangulated or something. He, he constructed yeah, yeah. a bipartite graph. Yeah, and and on this graph. Uh, you have zigzags, which are actually uh, the curves which are contractible. Yeah, he had uh, a flag at, at the vertex, uh, at, at the each vertex of the triangulation. Yeah, right. From that data, he constructed the bipartite graph inside each triangle and therefore on the whole of the surface. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Somehow he could, he could also, well, if you have a bipartite graph, you can construct a uh, what is called the, um, uh, well, the, 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 the a surface. So maybe Sasha did that. So uh, you can construct the covering of your original surface. So how you construct the covering? So you, you take every zigzag, you can, if you have a zigzag, and can, you can associate to every zigzag, you can associate, a, uh, you can glue a, 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 well, if zigzag is closed, you can glue a, uh, a disk, and then all these disks, uh, if you glue them together, every zigzag uh, bounds two disks because it, it, there are exactly two zigzags but in pro each edge. So you get the covering of your surface. Uh, and uh, you are going to say that the uh, high rank is the direct image of the rank one. It's high rank is the direct image of of, of uh -huh. yeah exactly. And, maybe I missed. Maybe he didn't mention this. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. he he hidden it that. It's the direct image of this one. What happens uh -huh. in in my case? In my case, or it's also suffers because it's his paper with uh, with uh, uh, Rick Kenyon. So the the idea is that uh, uh, the if you have the graph which I do, you have a torus. Uh, and the universal cover of the torus, well, the torus, and the disks on the torus are not contractible. So you cannot glue disks to them. Uh -huh. Instead of that, you can construct a universal cover. And on the universal cover, the zigzags are this form. If you get, uh, you glue something to every zigzag, you have a covering of every point is covered by infinitely many uh, uh, fibers. Yeah. So you have something. You have uh, here. You have a, also a covering of your torus, but covering on infin infinite degree. Uh huh. So therefore, you have flags, but flags in infinite dimensional space. Uh huh. However, uh, there is some symmetry acting on that because you have a group Z two acting of the torus, and therefore you this uh, Z two permutes the 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 fiber so you have additional symmetry which reduces your dimension of your space to, to finite one uh -huh. so you want the construction to be finite in in uh in Sasha's case it was the corresponding covering was finite uh from the very beginning mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay it's, okay, it's also so can, 
can be viewed off as the following. So if you consider universal cover of this surface, so you have, of course, you have universal cover of the surface, you have a disk and it corresponds to infinite many flags because you have a surface with flags. So you have, you have infinite, uh, you have flags at every, every point and you have flags uh, now you have flags on the universal cover, you have infinitely many flags. And you have the group, which is pi one of the surface acting on, on this picture. Uh -huh. uh, so we have infinitely many flags in finite dimensional space and the, this group of symmetry. Uh -huh. In the case, uh, then I, I explain the number of flags is finite, but the flags in the initial dimensional space mm -hmm. and the group of mm -hmm. symmetry is squared. So mm -hmm. these are both kind of, uh, well, they, there should have be universal uh, situation when they have infinitely many flags in this dimensional space, but this is so far not, not yet uh, studied. Yet. Yeah, okay. yeah, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was you. suspecting that there is a covering, but I could not guess. Yeah, yeah, there is, yeah, I, I did say it about it, but uh, mm -hmm. well, the covering is actually isomorphic to the spectral curve. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, this is just, well, mm -hmm. it's combinatorial weight. Spectral curve, of course, is, is a complex curve, but combinatorial is just isomorphic to this. this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more questions. So if there are no more questions, then we thank Valodia and uh, continue tomorrow. <laughs>